Anyway, I just want to say thank you all for coming. It means a lot. I'm excited to be done with school, to graduate, and to move on. For anybody who doesn't already know, my name is Tyler Johnston, and this is my story. To start off a little bit about me, I've been playing volleyball since I was nine years old. I've also done a lot with computer games and IT, just general troubleshooting at home. I do all of the tech stuff for my family. It's just something I've picked up at a young age and have enjoyed a lot. From there, a bit more in specific, I'm the oldest of five kids. The next under me is a boy at 16. I have another brother at 13, a sister at 10, and then I have another brother who's nine, 10 months. So lots of spread there. I also do a lot of photography and cinematography on the side. I actually took senior pictures here for two years. Um, I also took this picture down here, down in this corner, you can barely see it. Um, it's just a little watermark that I made in Photoshop by myself. But I went out to this paintball field, everybody knew me, I'd been playing for a couple years, and I wanted to try something different, so I took my camera out and just started taking pictures. A lot of them turned out really, really good, so I started selling them. Five bucks a piece, five bucks here, five bucks there. It added up pretty quick. The other cool thing was I was actually in public school until freshman year. I actually went to Central for the first quarter of my freshman year. And I'll go into more detail about how that ended later. But in elementary school, I participated in the Gifted and Talented program. That was so much fun. We were doing accelerated math. We did a unit on architecture. So we took out graph paper and T-squares, and we actually made a dream house kind of layout and floor plan in like fourth grade. It was so much fun. In Booklift Middle School, I was there all three years and I completed an, a Math One Honors class in eighth grade. That was another fun class that I took. It was very, very tough, but I was still having a lot of fun in school and I had a good connection with my teacher and it went very well. Before high school, I was at Thunder Mountain uh, during my fourth grade year, I switched to Caprock. Um, it was kind of like second quarter, I went to Caprock, and I was there all the way until the first or the end of the first half of fifth grade. Then I went back to Thunder Mountain to finish elementary school. From there, I went to Bookliff Middle School, and I completed all three years, and that's my home school. That's where I go to any time to do sports. I coached their volleyball team for four years. Well, I was an assistant coach for four years. That was a lot of fun, and I still love going back to see everybody there. When I left public school, it was second quarter at Central High School. It was really rough. During all of eighth grade, I was in a very committed kind of relationship. It was the first big thing that I'd ever been a part of. And then over the summer, we kind of grew, our, grew apart. And then a week before freshman year started, she broke up with me. Now I'm at a loss. I don't have that stability that I had in this big change. I also went from being loved by my teachers and having a great support system to not being able to make that connection. All of my teachers just kind of said, well, here's the work, go do it. I was put in an AP Bio class, an AP Geophys. I was also in an AP Math 2 and 3, and I had an AP English class. The only non-AP class I had was Global Studies, and that's because there wasn't an AP Global Studies at the time that I had left. So as a freshman, I was thrown into four AP classes, and I just I couldn't get any form of support or help. It was all just me on my own. So when I came here, I got to meet with Shauna and it was perfect fit. She welcomed me with open arms and I've, I've loved it here since. So when I started Key Performance Program, it was this past spring, or two springs ago in, at this time. I got to work with Miss Lori. She was fantastic. She was very much on my side trying to explain this program to my parents. My parents thought, oh no, the key performance program, it's not gonna get me a real diploma. Colleges are gonna look at me and kind of go, eh, it was an alternative program, and they'll push me aside. But Lori helped kind of 
be my advocate and help me get through that to get through to my parents and kind of get me into this program. But I needed this program and everybody knew it. I only had 12 and a half credits when I started junior year out of the 25 that I need to graduate. If I hadn't had this program, at this point I'd have a year or two years more of high school. And with how well I fit in at public school, that just isn't gonna work for me. So four high school classes, I took all of these here. So we're gonna start with my work he scores. I had a reading for information six, applied math, I also scored a six. Uh, locating information was five, applied tech four, workplace observation three, and business writing four. All of these are above average scores. Coming here and doing these, I didn't think I was gonna do well. A lot of people kind of brushed me off and thought I was not intelligent. Going through these and seeing my scores, I realized that I was not lacking. I was, I'm very intelligent, and since that confidence has brought me back, I've been able to build myself and kind of move forward. I also took a consumer awareness course. So I had a personal finance class at Valley, which I attended for a year, and then I had a personal budget for the key performance program that I had to make. So everything here is, this is how I made all of my money, and I got a loan from my parents while I was between jobs. And then all of these are different ways I've spent money. And it was very interesting to reflect on that and see where my money was going. I also went through and I had the overshort, so I saved $100 back in December or September. And then as I went through, it kind of evened out a bit more. Now I have two jobs, so if I were to go back and do this budget again, I'm sure it'd be 100% different. For science, I took a geophysical science class here. I also took biology here, but I also had to finish it at Valley. But there was a sociology class I also took here. If you were to look at my transcript, it'd say I failed, which is mostly true. I started sociology because I was interested in how humans react and behave when confronted with situations and other people. That really interests me. So I started sociology and I was going through and it was not something I was interested in. It was going over how culture affects people and how people affect culture, which is great. It's very interesting, but it wasn't what I was looking for. I was looking for something about behavior and how people will react to different situations. Seeing as it wasn't what I was interested in, it just kind of lacked the motivation to do something that wasn't going to benefit me or what I was interested in. For math, I took personal finance at, Val at Valley. I had a math one class at Bookliff Middle School. And then I took most of math two here at Grand River. Now it's, it didn't work out the greatest. I got through most of it, but I ended up making up my math credits in other ways. For fine arts, this is probably the most interesting one. Before I went back and kind of looked at everything I've done, I would not have classified myself as a creative person. I honestly, when you say creative, everybody thinks of pencil paper drawing, which is something I cannot do to save my life. But when I took photography here, I taught myself how to use a camera, how the framing worked, how the lighting worked, and just all the different ways you can change a camera to get the kind of picture you want. I also took the video media production course at Central High School. I did that as a crossover class, and it was eye-opening. I got to see what it was like to put people on a green screen and take that footage, put it into a professional program, and then make it into something cool. I got to help with the news that was put out every week. And to see that kind of process kind of showed me how difficult video production actually is. We take the news for granted, even though there's so much more behind it. And they don't do it, record it, and then post it. They do it live. So everybody is making adjustments on the spot. I took a creative writing course at Valley, and that helped me recenter myself. I was taking a mythology course, and I was writing in my free time. And then I was really getting into writing. 
and I it was actually writing this piece here, Depression Lives. And it was going really well. I was really enjoying the writing. So I brought it to my teacher and said, can I turn this piece into a creative writing course? And he said, he read it and was like, yeah, let's turn it into creative writing since you're enjoying it so much. So we went through and I continued writing this piece and it was reflective. It's, I feel that it's taking a new perspective on depression and other mental disorders that most people never experience and don't understand clearly. So I was doing my best to kind of explain that kind of thing and put, put it into words that most people who had trouble understanding it before would be able to understand it after they read it. And I think the capability I had in showing that kind of scared my teacher because he told me to stop writing it. Instead, he gave me pictures, black and white pictures, for me to look at and then write a short story about in one class period. So I, I of course, did the assignments I needed to do. I wrote some really great short stories that I'm very proud of, but I kept this in the background and I kept writing it in my own time because it, it was a very dark story, but it was very healthy for me to write. I also took a digital design course at the community college. That was a fantastic class. I just finished it this semester and I've learned so much from it. What it started out as was two halves. We had Mr. Molly and we had Mr. Hoffman. Mr. Hoffman started with us on the very first day and we started with figure drawings in a sketchbook. Now, I already said I am horrible at pencil paper drawing. I actually improved, but I'm still, I don't want to do it. I will find other ways to create art. But we're going through these figure drawings in the first day, and we get through, we kind of get the basics of it. Then he goes, here's your first homework assignment. Draw a hundred more of these. Every pose has to be unique. And the whole class just silent. We now had to do a hundred unique figure drawings. So we all took homework sketchbooks and I, I took mine everywhere. I was, I'd be sitting at work on my break, just looking around. I'd see a way somebody was sitting and I'd try and draw it as quick as I could. I'd take it to volleyball and try and capture a moment with a different pose and draw it as quick as I could. And there, I have never realized how many different poses there are, how many different ways somebody can sit until I started this assignment and had to draw a hundred different poses. The next day we go in and we're starting a tutorial on Photoshop. We had to make a poster for a donut shop. We didn't have any other direction than that. It was literally an advertisement poster for a donut shop. We could do sports, we could do shows, anything. It was all open. And we were learning how to use the different tools in Photoshop how to create shapes, how to texture them, how to cut out different pieces and move around pictures, make letters, change colors, and so on. And it was a great start into Photoshop. Before, I'd only ever used it for editing pictures. Now I'm using it to create something from nothing. So we continued on. The next assignment I can, that stood out to me the most was taking a cracked black and white picture. And we restored it. We cleaned up all the cracks, made it smooth again, and then we recolored it to make it what we would think of if it were to be taken today. So I cleared up all my pictures, gave her the skin tone I thought, colored her the hair I, the color I thought it would be, and that was another crazy kind of assignment that I never thought would have been possible. We continued on even more. We were going into musculature for the pencil paper drawing with Hoffman and Molly was working more with us in Photoshop and just different ways to use it. We did some animal combinations. So I took a hummingbird and a fox and I kind of mixed the different parts and created my own creature. We kept going through, we had to draw 10 unique Pokemon for Hoffman. 10 unique Pokemon. I don't know if anybody knows how many Pokemon there are, but 10 unique ones are ridiculously hard to think of. It took 
about a week for me to get 10 sketches. It was ridiculous. All of that was about first semester. We started our second semester and this was so much fun. We went in and for Hoffman, we went from sketching in a sketchbook to 3D modeling. That 3D modeling is what clicked with me. We learned how to create shapes and manipulate them to create a different sort of object. And then we started with building characters. So we built our characters and it brought a whole new respect for all those 3D movies that Pixar and other places have put out. Because it takes me about six hours to create a smooth model without clothes, without hair, without eyes, just a smooth model to start with. And that's not involving any texturing or animating. But all of this was just showing me the capabilities that you can go to with a sort of digital design. I was learning all sorts of different things for 3D modeling. I learned, I got better at sketching and drawing. I got to use Photoshop again and get better with that. And then we also worked in Adobe Premiere. Adobe Premiere was used by James Cameron's avatar and is still the highest grossing film to date. But to get access to that kind of professional program and to work with it just for simple little things was kind of eye-opening to see what we're starting with and what's possible with the same program. After that, I also had some history courses. I took a US government history here at Grand River. I had a Colorado history class at Valley, and I also took some basic global studies here. There's not much to say about them. They're just basic classes that I took. Now, maybe you didn't know this, but I have three jobs total so far, and I'm currently working two of them. Between the two, I work full time. My first job was Taco Bell, and I will say this right now, it sucked. I will never go back to fast food again because it was horrible. If I ever have kids, I'm gonna make them do fast food. Very contradictory, but working fast food not only taught me how many different ways people can be rude to you, but how to take the negativity that people have and let it brush off your shoulders and kind of still be able to do your job and be positive. Did that make the job better? No, it was, it was a very bad job, but it taught me a lot. I now work at K Jewelers and Latner Poma. Both jobs I started this year. K Jewelers, everybody knows it. I'm selling jewelry, I'm a salesman, and I work with diamonds day in, day out. It's a lot of fun. I love my job, I love my coworkers, and working there has helped me build my self-confidence again because people treat me like I'm worth something, like I'm intelligent, like they need me. Latner Palma is another great opportunity for me. I do that every morning and I do IT, IT work for them. IT work, there's so much more to it than I thought. It's so much more difficult than I thought but I love it. It's so much more problem solving. It's not Taco Bell where this is how it is, go do it. For this, it's problem solving. We have this issue. How are we gonna fix it? Well, there's option A, B, and C. Let's try A. A doesn't work, B, okay, let's try that. Think of something else, let's try that instead. It's all sorts of different problem solving and it's very mentally refreshing. On top of all that, Latner Poma is a global company. It's actually a, uh, a merger company. Latner is based out of Italy and Poma is out of France, or vice versa. I still haven't learned it. But to have location, the main locations in France and Italy, that's a big deal. The IT team that I'm on is actually totaling 20 people worldwide. So I work with all of the North America, or with most of the North American sites. So I, man I help manage sites in Miami, in New York, in Vermont, in Granby, Canada, in 
Kelowna, which is over in BC, and then I also work in Barrie. All these different spots have the possibility of them even sending me there to work on it physically. But just in town, I can connect to all those sites and help manage things going on. Which, for this, for being only 18, this is a fantastic opportunity because I can take this IT experience and go anywhere. And if I stay with Latin or Poma, the possibilities are endless. They can send me anywhere in the world. There's places in Peru, in Japan, in Africa, in India. There's some spots in Scandinavia. All these different locations are possibilities for me to travel to, to work on, to see. And that would give me the opportunity to not only have a very well-paying job, but to travel and see the world at the same time. Now, all of this contributes to my home life. It all comes back to it. So I have the three younger brothers and my younger sister, and my parents divorced two years ago. It was not a pretty divorce, and it still is not. With all that going on, it kind of it put me through depression. I'm just barely getting out of it. I feel I've had suicidal thoughts and I've had to battle them, I've had to get past that, and I've, I've gone through so much anxiety. I've had social anxieties, I've had personal anxieties, and all sorts of physical anxieties that have prevented me from being the kind of person I would want to be. And with all this, it's very difficult to get over and to get past and it's hard to understand for anybody who hasn't been through it. Outside of all of that, it, it all is kind of built out of what my home life is. I was outcasted by my grandparents because they're very strong Mormons. I, being a kid, questioned it, and they shoved me towards the religion. Being a kid still, I fought back and said, no, you can't tell me what to do. And I eventually found my own path away from religion and they didn't like that, and they outcasted me, and they wouldn't talk to me, and my relationship with them is still very rocky. My two jobs are helping to contribute and help my family survive. My dad has had congestive heart failure. My mom has way too many kids and works too much. There's so much going on that with all of it, it's hard to take care of the kids and pay for everything that the kids might need. So a lot of the time, my paycheck is going in towards groceries or helping with bills or payments that need to be paid off so that we don't lose something. And all of this is, it's been difficult. Having to grow up so fast, it was exhausting. I now, it's, I have an imbalance of I can be an adult, and I am an adult, but I never got to be a kid. And because of all of this, and because of all the emotional abuse that I've gone through, I've had to put up emotional barriers between myself and my parents, and I've had to be a barrier between my parents and my siblings, because I don't want my siblings to have to go through this. I don't want them to have to go through anything that I've had to go through. So I've had to step in between my parents and try and protect my siblings from all that hate and negativity that was going on in our house. And it's just, it's been very exhausting. And there's no other way to say it. It's been a crazy home life. One of my close friends who I think of as almost like a stepfather who's brought me in and he's taught me a lot of what I know and has raised me up in volleyball and helped me get to where I want to be. He, uh, he makes this joke every time I tell him what's going on. He says, how are you not in a mental hospital right now? How do you not need therapy every day? And I just laugh and say, I don't know, but I'm going on to the next day. And I move on and I do, th do my thing. After high school, my current goal, I want to play in the 2028 Olympics. They're going to be hosted in LA. I want to be there. I want to be playing. I'm going to play beach volleyball for the rest of my life. I want to make a living out of it if I'm going to play that long. Outside of the Olympics, 
the FIVB is the International Volleyball League, that's where my home will be. That's where I'm going to meet all the people that I'll be friends with, that I'll compete against, and heck, the statistics for professional athletes are not good. But I know that I have my backup career in information technology because of the opportunities and experience I have now. So thank you again for your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Good job. So we're going to have to ask you a few questions from the panel, but I would open it up to anybody in the room. Uh, I can start. I'll say, first of all, congratulations on, on finishing up and being a, a shining light in your family. I know they, they needed you for, it's obvious they needed you. And I think probably all, everybody needed you to be, to, to step up and you did so good job on that. Uh, I'll also say that I enjoyed your Depression Lives essay. Uh, I really like that advanced thinking when you're writing of the inanimate object, like I don't remember if it was a knife or a razor blade that was calling to you it continually. And I, that really um, was impactful. And then the, my, but my question, which now I'll get to, mm -hmm. was uh, your lessons of fast food. I think you should take that on the road and you could really make some money there because there's a lot to learn when you have to work a job like that. So what are some of the things that you feel like it would teach your kids who you plan on making do the fast food job? Um, what life lessons? Honestly, what it taught me and what I'd hope it to teach everybody is regardless of what a person is doing, they're a person. They're not some slave. They're not less than dirt. They might be a drug addict. They might be a sex addict. They might be any sort of addict, but they're still a human being and they deserve respect and they deserve empathy because they're a human with feelings. Thank you. Um, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> information technology, extremely, and you, you talked about this extremely complex field. Um, what do you see yourself doing to kind of, um, do you just see yourself continuing at Light Narcoma to continue learning more about information technology or do you have a, a different path that you're thinking of? Um, for now, I'm planning on staying with Latin Um There's been talk about moving me to full-time later this year if needed. Um, I'm very close with my supervisor. He's the stepfather-like figure that I mentioned. Um, he and I are very close and he's teaching me a lot of what I need to learn and it's all very interesting to me and I want to learn more and if I can stay with Latner, that's fantastic. From what I've heard and what I know about the company, it's a great company to stay with, but I do know that I want to pursue volleyball. So if I need to go somewhere else to pursue volleyball, I will have to I will leave Latner and pursue IT while I continue to compete in volleyball. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good job. Are there any other questions that I can answer for you? Absolutely. So in watching you give your presentation, mm -hmm. the thing you spent the most time in was the digital design and that art and how you felt about it and how it empowered you yet it doesn't seem to be a part of your future. Are, are you just so, dropping it? Or, because that well, seems to be something that has been a lot to you and it's been passionate, is that creativity? Yeah, How so I, I still write in my free time. I still love writing. Um, if I had more time, I would read more. I would love to read more stories. Um, but I still keep that creative side to me. I still do photography. I still work a lot with videos. Um, I record a lot of the tournaments I play in and I bring them home and then I work on them and I edit them together and I put them up on my YouTube channel which I can use for to show my self progression, to see what mistakes I made and how I can better myself and also just to show in the future. If I was to go to a professional kind of level, I'd want to show kids that were in situations like mine. I'm coming from a town here 
it has no men's volleyball. I've had to play in practices that weren't for me. There were girls' practices. I've had to play against adults and in different sorts of leagues where I was always the youngest and smallest. And I want to be able to show that even coming from that kind of situation, if you're dedicated, you can make it to a professional level and play the sport of your dream.